Hi, we're the Beefy Boys and we're here today with our good friends Oak Tree Stoves. And we're going to be asking the question, how do you barbecue the perfect steak? So what makes the perfect steak? What do you reckon, Lee? Well, I would say a combination of cooking and meat. Definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two yeah, essential yeah. factors in cooking a good steak, you will need to cook it and you will need a steak to cook. So the two factors that we're really looking out for is a crust. You've got to have an awesome crust on the yeah. steak. That's you know where all your flavour is going to come from. So we want to find out what makes the best crust. The second thing we're going to look at is what gets the most even cook. I mean, so often you see people have cooked a steak and it's sort of grey on the outside. You get a little bit of ready pinky bit in the middle. That's not medium rare. What you've done is you've overcooked the outside bit of it and you haven't really cooked the middle bit. We're looking for perfect pink the whole way through. Mm, so first step is going to be what makes the best crust. Now we're going to try cooking these three sirloins all of the same way, all roughly the same thickness. We're going to try cooking them three different ways. The way that I'm going to do is I'm going to use a cast iron hot plate over the coals and see if that makes the best crust. Uh, what I'm going to do is cook the steak directly over the coals as well, but also on top of the grill. I'm going to take my steak and I'm going to put it directly on the coals and cook it dirty style, caveman style. And I am going to watch and uh, provide moral support for everybody. Thanks, Lee. Okay, so we've got three uh, sirloins here from Neil Powell. Absolutely awesome Hereford beef here, as you can see. So what we're going to do before we chuck them on, and you should do this with any steak, we're going to pat them down, dry out the surface area, and what we're also going to do is we're going to make very tiny little incisions over the top, little crisscross sort of marks, because we want to increase the surface area so we can get as much crust as possible on the steaks. But then there's also a little secret how we're going to season it for this test, isn't there, Chris? Yeah, to keep it fair, even, we'll put the steaks down, flip them and then we'll season the cook side, flip them again, season the cook side. So we're all doing it the same way. So there's no arguments in the difference of the cooking when we come to tasting. And what we're going to use for the rub on this, Dan, what do you reckon? Uh, we're just going to use salt. That's all you need, nothing else, nothing else really. Don't want to add anything to the steak itself. Just a nice bit of smoked salt, that's all we're going to use. You've also got to be careful when you sear in a steak because I mean, things like pepper can burn. So we're going to just have salt on there because we're going to get as much sort of high heat on this steak as possible. So we're just going to score these, then we're going to pat them down and we're going to chuck them onto the grill. So what we're doing there is we're starting to cook the fat off, starting to get that render, because on every piece of sirloin you've got a nice sort of like strip of fat on the back. But then I'm just gonna give that a little bit of a char to get it going. It's also the great thing about doing uh, the sirloin like this as well, is you're starting to get a little bit of fat rendering out onto the hot plate. You can see that hot plate's red hot. Now you wanna keep it moving as well. Cool, look at that, we've got a nice char. So now we're gonna chuck the uh, steak down. Now with both of these, one of the things that people go wrong with a steak is you don't actually want grill marks on a steak. It's not good. What you're doing there, you want to crust the whole way around it. When you see grill marks in a steak, the little crisscross bits, all you're doing there is getting a crust on like 50% of the meat. So the important thing is whether you're cooking it on a cast iron like this or on a grill, is to keep it moving. Because you don't want grill marks, you want a crust. This is kind of caveman style, cooking directly onto the coals. And what you'll find is, you think that it might overly char or overly burn doing it this way, but the steak actually Ooh, starves the oxygen supply to the coals, so the amount that it will burn is actually limited and it just gives it a nice even cook. You'll pick it up, you might knock a bit of ash off, um, a bit of coal might stick off, but there's nothing you can't just pull away with the, uh, with the tongs. So I'll just leave that in position. The beauty is I don't have to do anything, I'll just let it sit there until I flip it. Okay, so we're giving it the first flip. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hit it with plenty of seasoning. What a job, eh? <laughs> you can see, got a little coal there. Pull that off. Oh hell, well, that's fine. <sighs> Going into this, yeah, my money was on the cast iron, to be honest. Even, at the but, moment. Yeah, looking at this, Dan's got a real good crust on there. We can't see Chris is from here, so we're not sure what his is like. It's very, it's very important when cooking directly onto coals that you, um, you use a natural lump wood charcoal. Um, don't want to use briquettes or anything that's been chemically made. Just keep it natural and you've got no problem. So when you're building up that crust, you want to be make sure you're getting all the edges yeah. of the steak as well. You don't want to forget about this, because oh, that's where your flavour's coming from, yeah. is that crust. All over. Right, so for this step of the experiment, we're cooking all the steaks to finish on this. We're not going to reverse sear or finish them off low. We just want to see which one of these methods produces the thickest crust. So we're going to take these off when they hit 52C, which should give us like a, a really good sort of medium rare. 
Okay, so we've done the uh, crust test, and here we are with the finished results. This one here? Yeah, this one's mine. This one's done over the charcoal itself, but on top of the grill. I think it's the best, because you still get the sort of taste of the fire and the flame and the charcoal itself, but not the sort of direct burnt contact, which... Um, yeah, well, yes, yeah. this middle one here is the one that I did, which is on the cast iron. Now, I reckon the cast iron is going to be the one. It works amazingly for burgers. You get an awesome crust. It keeps it juicy. And as you can see, we've got a real nice thick crust. And then at the end, we've got this sorry sucker. If you like things rough and ready and a bit rustic, then this is the one for you. I've cut directly on the charcoal. It might not be the prettiest, but it's going to have the flavour. It's going to get that lump wood, natural smoky charcoal flavour in it. And uh, yeah, I think the proof's going to be in the eating. It looks like something that's been run over. It's, yeah, uh, I'm not going to argue with that. I think I've got a bit excited. I flipped it too early and it might have um, cooked a bit in places where it shouldn't have been in others, but... Yeah. So, yeah. so this first step is not really about the evenness of the cook or anything in, the, uh, like. in the meat or what it looks like, <laughs> although ideally we want to look something better than that. Um, what we're going for is seeing what makes the breast crust, right? So we're going to chop all these in half, first of all, flip them up so you guys can have a look and we can have a look and see what it's looking like before we actually test it. So what should, shall I whack them all in half here? Yeah, go for it, man. Okay, so first of all, we've got the one which is done on the grill directly over the coals. What do you reckon, Lee? Which one are you thinking here is going to be the best? Um, I wouldn't like to put my money on any of them, to be honest with you, man. That's an expert opinion there from our resident pit master. The first bite is with the eye. It is indeed. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, it might not look good, but the one thing about that, you might impart some flavour into it directly from the charcoal. Thanks. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. So we weren't going for an even cook there, but that's not too bad, actually, mm. across the boards. If I put these into enough slices for us all to try some, yeah? Mm. So... Okay, so here's some slices. So this is the one over the charcoal. This is your cast iron. Uh, excuse fingers and then this one here is your dirty we're not looking at this right now but you can see on all three of these we do have a little bit of gray on the outside now that's what we're trying to avoid and that's what the next step of what we're going to look at is going to be doing whether it's a reverse sear or sear and then go low and slow to try and get an even cook but you can see there's a good crust on sort of all three I'm still leaning towards cast iron with this from the look of it yeah I hate to say it, but it I think I am as well but yeah it seems a bit more uh, sounds a bit for cliche saying a bit more crustier Seems a lot more hard and a bit more bite to it. So real, real sear on that. Not as much graying on the outside, so it yeah. is there. It's where the flavour is, because mm. in the charcoal kind of sear on this one, are you going to get more of that woody sort of flavour? You know, are we going to benefit from that? I see. Well, the proof's in the pudding. Should we go for the yeah, over charcoal first, yeah? Sounds good, yeah, yeah. Everyone tuck in. There you go, Chris. Cheers. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. It's so good. Yeah. And it's juicy, it's got a nice crust on it. So we're going to cast iron next, yeah? Yep. Okay. Let's cut that out for you. Give you a talk. Yeah. Already this, the flavour in that sear is yeah. Yeah. slightly better than that. Better than the pan, yeah. It's juicier as well, I think. Yeah. It's got a bit more. Mm. It's like that. I think you just got that constant heat from the cast iron. The juice can go in there early, can it? Mm. Like the mine, the juice will be falling through into the coals. Yeah. Kicking a bit of flame, which is good, but you're losing some of that moisture. You don't really miss that charcoal flavour either. No. I think it's because it's so close to the coals anyway, you do get that natural sort of flavour from the mm. yeah. from the barbecue. Man, that's good. So we're going for the roadkill. They do, do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh god, terrible. <laughs> oh. I mean, that is nice. It is nice. You do get the charcoal taste as well. It's slightly drier though, isn't it? It's nice from the dirtiness you get that kind of charcoal on us, but it's definitely not as juicy. No, i definitely say no. the, uh, the cast iron pan wins this one for me. For the, I, best, for the best crust. Man was clearly advancing when he, when he learned how to smelt iron ore and, and create that cast mm. iron pan, you, you know. And here we are today, the pinnacle of man. So, we've done the first part of the experiment, and uh, they're all good steaks, aren't they? Yep, great steaks all around, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. There's one definite winner, though, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. cast iron. So, if you want to get a nice crust on your steak, you could uh, do what we did there and cook your steak from beginning to end on a cast iron, and you will end up with an absolutely awesome steak. But as we noticed when we were looking at it, there was little sort of like overcooked areas, weren't there? On there? Mm. It almost had a ring of grey right inside, yeah. 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 And what we're going for, we want that perfect pink the whole way through. So, the way to do that is we're going to want to sear it on a high heat but cook it through on a low heat. And there's kind of two ways of doing that, isn't there? Yeah. Well, right over the coals, you know, that's that's direct. With the sear, it's a direct kind of cooking method. The heat's penetrating it. But then when you whack it into the oven, you've got an indirect heat. It's kind of like cooking with convection. 
the heat sur surrounding it and that's what, when you're going to get the even kind of cooked through. So we're going to try that using the combination of like a real high heat for the sear and a low heat to kind of cook it through in two different ways. The one way we're going to do is we're going to sear it first and then we're going to try cooking it off at 120 uh, degrees C in the Traeger to try and get that even cook. But then the other way is the really fashionable way at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, the reverse here. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's where you put it into the Traeger first, cook it in there nice and even and take it out and then give it a finishing sear on top of the hot coals afterwards. So what's your money on? What do you reckon? I think reverse sear sounds cooler, but I'm on the other way. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan I'm of the other reverse, way. Reverse, reverse, yeah. reverse for me too, yeah. But well, usually I always do it, sear it and then finish it off low. But I do think the one thing you might get with a reverse sear is because you're uh, doing it low first, you might dry out the outside even more and get even more of a crust. So mm. I'm on the fence. What do you reckon, Lee? Uh, I agree with you with the dry, drying in crust. Yeah. Yep. Strong words again, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's put that fence to the test. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. we're going to score these up, pat them down, and then we'll get them in and try it out. Science. Yeah. Hello, darkness, my old friend. So we've got the Traeger set to uh, about 120C at the moment. Uh, we're going to whack this one in. So this one's going to be the reverse sear. So we're going to cook it off slow in here first. So it's going in, no seasoning, nothing like that. We don't want the salt to dry it out at all. We'll season it after we've seared it. So. Chuck her in. Yep. The good thing about these Traegers is it comes with a built-in internal probe. So you can just push them into the middle, pull up the lid, and you've got the reading on the side. You can always keep an eye on it. So we're going to bring that up to uh, about uh, 40 to 42 uh, degrees C. Because we don't want to bring it all the way up to 52, which would be a nice medium rare. We still want a bit of space on there for us to cook it on the, uh, on the hot plate. So this is the other method. We're going to sear it first. And once you've got a nice crust on it, we'll whack it in the oven. So the secret of keeping it moving is you can hear that sizzle and it's also when you're moving it around the hot plate you want to be kind of chasing that sizzle around because every time it touches the hot bit it's transferring heat so that cast iron is getting cooler and the other bit's heating up so that's why Chris keeps on moving it it's going to help build up the best crust possible and when it comes to seasoning you want to season not only the top and the back you want to do the sides and all the way around as well and when you're seasoning a steak especially a nice sort of thick cut like this you know a sort of 16 18 inch steak you want to be seasoning the hell out of it because it's a big, big cut of meat and the only place you're going to get seasoning on is that outside. So you can chuck on way more salt than you think is humanly safe. So what are you thinking about the sear on this steak, Lee? I think it's pretty strong. Definitely, definitely a strong sear going on there. Yeah. What's your favourite bit about it? The uh, colour. Brown? Definitely. It's a definite brown, isn't it? I mean, the thing that causes that brown is what we call the Maillard reaction. Mm. So what that is, is that's all the sugars and stuff coming out of uh, the meat and caramelising, and that's what's going to give you that really, really meaty flavour. So whenever you're char grilling anything, brown is what you're actually going for. If you see black, black's never ever going to taste nice. So that's hit about 31 at the moment, so we're going to take that out. Cool, so the probe's telling us that the reverse seared steak has, uh, has reached about 42. 41C right now, so we're going to take it out, let it rest, and then we're going to get the seared one in to finish off. There we go. Take it out. So now we're going to bring it over here, let it rest on the side, do a swap, and put the one that's been already seared back in the oven. So Tony? There you go. Right, right, back in. Okay, so this is the reverse seared steak. Now, reverse sear, when it was first invented, was done in the sous vide machine. So you'd vac pack a steak and you cook it in a water bath up to your temperature and then you'd sear it. But doing it on a barbecue actually does an interesting thing. It dries out the outside of the steak more. So this is where I think it might just edge doing it the other way, mm. because I reckon you might get a bit of a better crust uh, doing this way. So we're patting it down now, and then we can do exactly the same process. Chuck it on a hot plate, char it, season it, and then let it rest. Let's do it. Once again, we're going to do the fat side first to give it some rendered fat. That's a nice even crust already, isn't it, on there? Yeah. See the little gaps with the score marks? Mm. You know, this salt should get into those gaps. Yeah, take it off. There, mate. Yeah, go on. So the steak that we seared first and then finished off low in the tray has reached by sort of 51, 51 52. 52 yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. so bang on where we want it now. So there we are. Ready? Yeah. Beautiful. So here we are, we've got the uh, two steaks. This one here was the one which was reverse seared 
and then this one here is the one which was seared first yeah. and then finished off low. I mean, they look almost totally I different. I the look of that, mm. a lot better than that one. What's interesting, I mean, both steaks are the same weight, they were patted out to the same thickness. It's interesting how the uh, reverse seared one stayed sort of quite thin, but then yeah. the seared and finished off low is like kind of puffed up a little bit. I think this one, I agree, it's got like a nicer sear, but I think that one's going to eat better and be more of an even cut. But you reckon? I don't know. Just cut it open, I reckon. Should we cut it open and see, yeah? yeah? Open All sure. right. Let's do it then. Okay, so, ready? Okay, ready? moment of truth, yeah. You ready? We flip them up, yeah? One, two, three. Oh, wow. Ooh. The reverse here looks good. Oh. I mean, interestingly, one thing I would say is the reverse sear seems to me like it's losing more juice than yeah. the other one. The crust does look a lot thicker on this one. The puffed up increased size of this one would suggest what you just said, Murph, as well. There's not much in it, is it? No. There's not much in it. No, no, we'll slice these up. Alrighty. Cool. All right, then, so the taste test, yeah? So we should, we should try to reverse the it first. Thing. I'm intrigued. Yeah, let's try it. Mm. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, I was really unsure about the uh, reverse here process in the first place, but that is pretty bang on. Mm. It's still juicy. Mm. It's got quite an even cut. Crust real nice. Mm -hmm. Now we have the normal one. So then this one. Reverse, reverse. Mm. It's just as good in my opinion. Mm. Mm. This one's slightly juicier, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. I mean, they're both taken off exactly the same temperature, 52 for that one, 52 for that. I'd say both of those are up there with some, uh, some of the best steaks. Yeah, without a doubt. I've ever had. Mm. Chris, what's your, what's your favourite then, mate? What would you say? Well, it's, it's so hard to pick a, a winner. You have to. I'm going to have to, aren't I? For me, it was this one, but it was, it was, it was really good. The reverse, the reverse here. The reverse, reverse, the first sear. Yeah, the yeah. sear, the, sear yeah. first. So I think, yeah. you know, it, it held the juices, it, it, it was succulent, um, it had that sear, and it, it just melted in my mouth. Yeah, uh, yeah. For me, I. I can't decide. It's, it's, it's literally 50-50. I mean, the reverse here was lovely. The crust was incredible on it. It mm. was so juicy. But the first here was, it was so moist. It was like butter. It just fell apart. I liked them both. I literally can't decide. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to cook a steak at home, like either of those ways is going to produce you a fantastic steak. But I mean, if I had to pick one, I would say that the one that was seared first and then finished mm. low was maybe just a little bit sort of juicier and a bit more sort of melt in your mouth. Yeah. But mind you, you know, the reverse here one, it had it had a slightly more complex flavor maybe yeah. because perhaps that crust drying out. But yeah, either way, you're gonna end up with a fantastic steak. What do you reckon, Nick? Uh, yeah, I'm with you and Christian. That's uh, melt in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the thing is, if anyone ever argues with you and says one way is better than the other, then, you know, try it for yourself. And that's the only yeah. way you're ever going to find out. And it's whatever you like. Yeah. Really. Everyone's different. Yeah. yeah. Well, tell them to watch this video and say, well, the beefy boys said this one. Apart from me, well, he said both. He liked both of them, yeah. So. On the fence. I'm different. Yeah. He's different. Indecisive. We're all different. So anyway, so thank you for being with us here today. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed our steak experiment. Try it out at home. Let us know you get on, leave us a comment. And uh, if you really like the video, share it around, show your mates and that. And good luck barbecuing this summer. And uh, remember to try both the reverse sear and the reverse reverse sear. Until Cheers. next time. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>see me Ronald? Yeah! Excellent. Thanks for watching folks. I'm Tobby and when I'm not chasing the beefy boys in person I'm following them all over YouTube. You can too. Just subscribe here. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Oh, God damn it Ronald! Sorry,